I've been out here for 30 minutes talking and it won't even record. Ain't that a bitch? Wow, Satan. That's what's up. That is what's up. I like that. Well, it's time to start all over then. I thought you was coming to DSW. I was about to say it's right there. If you was, yeah, I thought you was oh, coming here. here. I'm a, I'm a there. Oh, okay. <laughs> but thank you anyway. Yeah. So anyways, first up I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim of Kapidash. Double honors to the apostles and others of great millstone. Shalom, salutations to the whole four elect that's fighting the good fight of faith and true sincerity and wholeheartedly. Shalom unto the Akwa, which is the women believers. Shalom unto you. All right? So yeah, like I was saying, been out here for like 45 minutes talking. Now, and the spirit, I guess, has told me to check the phone. So I've been out here talking and wouldn't even record. Satan is in the midst. So anyways, going back to what I was talking about. A lot of things is happening. Inflation is high. The orchestrated famine is on um, event. It's starting to be seen more. Certain parts of um, parts in the United States, the stores ain't ain't um, ain't stocked like it used to be. You got planes just dropping out the sky, landing on food processing plants. You got um, Russia, Ukraine, that little war thing going on over there, which is going to usher into World War III. But that's the fifty percent of the export grain in the world. That's the breadbasket of Europe. All right, and then you got farmers over here. Bill Gates bought up all the land uh, with this bird flu. They got the farmers to kill their chickens and turkeys, like 20 million of them. Then uh, one plant, they uh, they said burn all the chicken and then they fire all the workers. You got jobs laying people off. You know, and the reason that they doing that for they can make a profit because everything is high. You got gas high as hell. You got diesel high as hell. And then people, they don't look at that as a, um, you know, a great thing because they don't use diesel. But they don't think the people who bring in the goods do. So a lot of things is happening right now. And that's why Proverbs uh, 29 and 18, which I always quote, where there is no vision, the people perish. So you got a lot of people who gonna perish because they don't have a vision. And then they only believe what they see. So let me start off with that real quick. So uh, you gotta understand. John 12 and 25. Matter of fact. John 12, 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that head of his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. One thing that this world cannot guarantee you is life eternal. One thing that this life cannot, I mean, one thing this life can't guarantee you is peace. As the scripture said in Isaiah 48 and 22, there is no peace saith unto the wicked. There is no peace unto the wicked, man. And since the earth is given in to the wicked, giving it to the hands of the wicked, how can you expect peace? It's no peace, man. So if the Lord would delay his time, the scripture says that he have to shorten the days or no flesh will be saved. That's what you call a devil. That's what you call Satan. That's what you call a wicked nation ruling this earth. That's why the world is the way that it is because the scripture says when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. That's these people. So that's why, you know, the Lord, he accomplished his work. We went against him. He made us the tail. He made the base man the head. Like, you have to understand, the scriptures call him the base man. When you go to Ezekiel 7 and say he is the worst of the heathen, he's on top. He's on top to the point that whatever he say, people believe. That's why you got people who don't even believe in God because this man, he's so godly, he's telling you that it ain't no such thing. He took a hold of our book, made it into some fairy tale book. He never go into the um, prophecies. He never tell us, well, he didn't tell us who we are. And guess what? We found out through the Holy Spirit. That's the one thing that he don't got control over. He don't got control over the Holy Spirit, but he got control over everything else because the Lord gave it to him. So when you go to 1 John 2 and 15, it said, love not the world for the love of the world is enmity with the most high. 
And it says the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So when people look into this place, it's very tempting. They want it, they want it. It's a lot of, you know, gadgets out here. The scripture said that many devices went into the world. So there's a lot of gadgets out here. It looks pretty cool. And then you got you gotta understand that the flesh and the spirit war against each other. And it's easy to give in to the flesh. So people like to go, like, you know, give in to the flesh because it's easier. It's no restraint. So you see the masses. And the scripture said, follow not the multitude to do evil, but our, but our people and people in general. But who cares about the rest of the people? They're heathens. These people right here, the reason that we at the bottom is because every time we get around the heathen, we take on their ways. We want to see what they're about. Ooh, that look pretty cool. Let me go worship Mole. Let me go worship Dagon. Let me go worship Nimrod. Let me go worship the Queen of Heaven. Let me go worship sweet Jesus. All right, a, a person that was beat into you when you was in slavery. So you got to understand that our people, and then when you go to Judges 3 and 1, he said that he left these major nations around to prove you, prove me test. We failed miserably. That's why we at the bottom. That's why the, the, the deliverance is going to be so captivating. And then once the truth come out totally, because guess what? We still got to go through the accuser of, of his brethren. So they're going to put us on the news, which he thinking that he demonizes, but he just putting more of the spotlight on the Hebrew Israelites. So then when everybody know the truth, which I believe they do already, because this word been on the internet since 2007, 15 years now. It was regional before 2007. Now it's worldwide. You got camps in Japan. You got camps in Germany. You got pits in, camps in Italy. You got camps in Jamaica. You got camps everywhere. Africa too. So, we're coming into a time where all the people who thought it was a game, you cannot say that these things ain't coming to pass. You can't say inflation ain't happening. You can't say that the orchestrated famine ain't happening. All this is happening, and it's beautiful. So, if you are in the right mindset, you better pray to the Lord without ceasing. Pray to the Lord without ceasing that be taken out the conquer dash away from you, which is the Holy Spirit. So... Ask for him to give you strength to endure to the end. Because we're going to need it. Bad times is coming. Bad times is coming. So where there's no vision, the people perish. The Lord gave certain men the eye sound. You got false prophets out here. Who got the same sign? Who, who surname they sell Israel and all that. But they ain't going into no prophecies. They ain't going into the electronic imprint, Revelation 13 and 16. They ain't talking about that, which is very, very important. Elon Musk is talking about the brain imprint. All right, more and more, he's saying that he can do all these miracles. We've been telling you for years that he's going to present this thing as some type of salvation, but then he's going to coerce you to do it anyways because when the famine come to fruition, guess what's going to be the solution? That electronic imprint. So, man, man, this is beautiful, man. Then you got now the pre the petrol dollars on his last leg is pretty much done. Now the Russian ruble is the number one performer currency in the world. I just read that this morning with the Bloomberg.com. So, because the BRICS nations, which has become, consists of Brazil, Russia, uh, India, China, and South Africa. Then you got um, the other nations that's allies of Russia, like Turkey, and, uh, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran. So you got, oh, Egypt too. So you got to understand that it's three, so it's 300 plus million people over here. Do you understand just with the brick nations alone, that's three billion people. You could do damage with three billion people that's only dealing with your currency. So that's what they're doing. So the, the sanctions backfire on United States of America. But that's just the Lord putting the jaws back in um, Gog and Magog. And, you know, the Lord said, and um, Sirach, Let's get that. Because even though, you know, we mentioned, we, we quote it all the time that a man's going is of the Lord. How then can any man understand his own way? But don't just quote that, believe that. Last time I checked, Esau Edom is a man too. He's the worst of the heathen. He's a base man. The scripture said, the people of my curse. You think the people of his curse going to have an advantage over the elect of these people? No. So our people have been beat down. The Lord accomplished his word. We went into captivity. We've been scattered. We have to bottom everywhere we go. So you got to understand that that's why our people are hopeless. 
he gave only the remnant hope. He's, Isaiah 10 and 20 said that the, that the elect won't stay upon them, which the remnant won't stay upon them that smoked them. Are people still looking for a handout from Esau? Are people still cleaving on Esau? Are people still trusting Esau? Are people still voting? Are people looking at, are people, are people voting him for everything? But that is the curses. We, go, we have to go to him for one of all things. But the elect is going to not stay upon him. We're going to stay upon the Howard Bosch and Al Rashad. So, Ecclesiasticus or Zerach 18 and 3, it says, Who governed the world with the palm of his hand, and all things obey his will? All things obey his will. So I'm talking about for our, from our downfall to the uprising of the self-proclaimed white people, Esau, Edom, the devil that the Bible speaks of, being on top, all the nations in the ancient time. Uh, having a foot on our throat because you got to realize that's why when you go to Jeremiah 30 and 16 it said all them that had you in captivity should go into captivity all them that had that spoiled thee they should be a spoiled one to you so the Lord gonna pay back that's what the kingdom of heaven is all about us being on top the nation's in subjection if you mad about it take it up with your how old boss me I was shy and I bet you lose so I bet my life on it so it says and they all things obey him, for he is the king of all, by his power dividing the holy things from from uh, dividing holy things among them from profane. So that's why you got the elect and you got the two thirds, and then you got the rest of the heathen. So the little small sanctuary, matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Ezekiel 11 and 16. It said, Therefore say, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, we are among the heathen, but the Lord gave us a little sanctuary, which we're going to continue to read. And although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. That's why you got camps in basically every major city, almost in every country. But it's a small number. That's, that's what you call the little sanctuary. That's where we give off our sacrifices. We make our body a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service. So while you got people looking at us like we're crazy, I look at them like they're crazy. They don't understand. They're going to die a horrible death. That's what's coming to this world. Russia about to bomb this place. And the only people that's going to make it is the people that believe in Yahweh Bashim Al Shai from these people. And it's going to be a remnant. Two thirds are going to die the same death as these so called white people. Imagine that. Because they want to cleave on. So, guess what? If you don't repent and come back, there's no hope for you. And I hate to be, you know, I love to be the messenger. But that's why Paul said that. Um, have I became your enemy because I tell you the truth? And, it's, and, and, and yes. But guess what? This, the scripture said that. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. No, that's Romans 10 and 10. For with the heart, which is your mind, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So you got people who are comment board Israelites. You got people who sit on the couch when it's cold. You got people who only come out when it's nice out. They don't believe. The scriptures say be in season and out of season. So you got people, so you got Aisha PK at the corner down there. It's a nice day, they outside. Where was they at last week and the week before that and the week before that, they wasn't nowhere to be found. They was hibernating. So it said, for with the heart believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And you can't just, the scripture said, they, everybody who say, Lord, Lord, should not enter to the kingdom of the Most High. Why? Because you got people who use the name, the right name, but they don't tell you the truth. They don't talk about the electronic imprint. They don't tell you about, if I, let me check this camera. They don't tell you about the electronic imprint. They ain't telling you about Babylon gonna be destroyed. Everything is about you saw the devil. You saw the devil. Yes, he is the devil. But the scripture is more vast than that. Then you got then you got debate in Israelite. They just want to debate. Where where is the prophecy? Revelation 19 and 10 says that the spirit of prophecy is the spirit of Yahushua, man. 
So privacy is the most important. So you're supposed to be talking about world events and what's about to come. The electronic imprint is coming, Revelation 13 to 16. The famine is already being orchestrated. It's about to hit this place. I give it a couple more months. Um, I came across an article probably about three months ago. A man said that if the world stopped producing food, the world have enough food for three months. That's it. And right now, the world is on a standstill. Production is not moving like that. Then you got the diesel gas. All right, that's high as hell. You got semi trucks on a standstill because it's high. People say, I don't use diesel, so it don't concern me. It do concern you because when you go into the store, pretty soon ain't gonna be nothing on the shelf. They the ones that bring in the goods. So a lot of people is gonna be affected. The prophecies is affecting everybody, whether you believe it or not. And guess what? A lot of people are gonna be sadly mistaken. People that walk past and just give you evil looks and don't wanna inquire. Hey, the scripture say you're without excuse. You walk past, you don't inquire, especially if you're an Israelite, you're without excuse. Every time you walk past, you mark. Every time you go on the internet, you see a Hebrew Israelite video, you don't click on it, you scroll up, you make a face at it, you're marked. So all these people that's going to talk about all these people that's talking about down the street, they're marked. And they ain't going to make it. I'm, I, and, and I'm very, very, I'm pretty sure of it. Because like I said, scriptures have to be fulfilled. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Isaiah 46 and 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand, I will do all my pleasures. So when the scripture says that in the days of the Son of Man should be as the same as the days of Noah. So people was eating and drinking and giving in marriage. Somebody got to do that. That's what they doing. When I when I look up, when I look at these thousands of people that's walking up and down the street, I see nothing but mirth in their face. I don't see no concern. See what's going to happen? Which Proverbs go into? Proverbs 1. A lot of people are okay. When things are not at your doorstep, they don't think about it. So if you, in the city where you at, if you go into the store and it seems like it's stopped, and maybe it's just missing some strawberries, you don't even take that to heart. Like, hey, something ain't right about that. You just be like, oh, maybe, maybe I just came in the day that they didn't stop. Or maybe they stopped it yesterday. Or maybe they're gonna stop it the next day. So a lot of people, when you go into the store and your shelves is stocked enough. Or a matter of fact, maybe it ain't stopped. Maybe you just was able to get what you needed. So you thinking that, okay, I'm good, I'm good. So wait, we're coming into a time where a lot of people gonna find out the hard way. So your government, they don't care about you. They only care about their bottom line. They don't even care about their own people. I always say that if I was an Edomite, which is a so-called white person, I'd be protesting more than these people. This is your kingdom and you got Jake doing better than you. You want to be mad at Israelites, blame your damn government, blame the people, the 1%. The 1% who got all the riches and they distributed the way that they wanted to, right? So they... Yeah. So you got to understand that we're coming into a time... Oh, the man is asking if I'm getting paid for this. And I said no. But what I really should have said, I should have said in the end. But, no. And then, then he was like, okay. That's a, that's a damn shame. Everybody think you got to do something for money. See? Matter, ooh, that, there we go. There we go. Let me get this. So the man asked me, am I doing this for money, right? Now, in all actuality, you can say that, but that's going to happen in the end. See, we can't say yes because the scriptures say they endure to the end the same should be saved. I don't know if I'm going to endure to the end. I hope to. So... Everybody tie everything with money. You, oh, I ain't doing this for free. I ain't doing that for free. So that's why you got these false prophets out here. They took the Judas purse. That's why they don't teach the truth. That's why they under the 501c3. Because they do this for money. The scripture said that the hireling cared not for the sheep. So anyway, Matthew 6 24. No man can serve two masters. For either will he hate the one and love the other. Or else will he hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon is a de deity that deals with riches. riches. So you got to understand. I do this as my only. This is the only sacrifice I can do. As the scripture said that the heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. What can you build me? 
That's why Romans said, make your body a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. It's nothing else I can do. This is pleasing to the Lord. The Lord said we became fools for your house, shall I say. So the only reason that we're fools is because that's the way that the world perceives us. We know the mysteries, they don't. So they think that we're just doing this just because we disgruntled. But to be honest, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7 said that surely oppression makes a wise man mad. And the gift destroys yeah. the heart. And the gift don't have to be money. It can be anything. It can be housing. It can be food stamps. It can be a little 20 twin twin. It can be some weed. It can be a bottle. It can be all that. Anything that's, that's stopping you from coming into the truth all the way. See, you got access to alcohol, weed, and pills, holes, and all that. You got access to all that wickedness. So people delight in that. So you got to make a real sacrifice when you come and do this. Or when you believe anyway. See, everybody got faith, but they just got faith in what they believe in. Right? Because you got a problem with people that my belief is in the scriptures 100% truth. It's nothing in that Bible that's a lie. Except for when the Council of Nicaea, you know, try to uh, implement the virgin birth in the, uh, in the Trinity. In, uh, or in Easter. So when you go into it, though, you find out that that was added in in the Council of Nicaea. But for the most part, right there. Excuse me. Right there. DSW, right there. 387. Right there. Yep. So, yeah, so you're like it's, it's it's a beautiful time to be alive, man. Beautiful time to be alive if you know the truth. Bad time to be alive. Like even Kevin Samuels had um, you know, <laughs> he even had mercy. He in the spirit world, y'all still down here. You don't know what before you. So the, here's the thing. Matter of fact, let me show you this, man. Let me show you this. I'm trying to see if I can get ISUPK. I don't know their cat for. Yeah, they are. It, it, you can see them, but it's hard to explain. But anyways, um, to, like to explain where they at. But as you see, man, it's hundreds. And here's the thing: I see these people all the time. I see these people all the time. I hope my head ain't cut off too. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, man, it's just like you got people who just don't understand, man. But the scripture said the elect obtained and the rest were blinded. So don't feel sad. Don't feel sad. See, one thing about coming into the 100% truth is that you have to be okay with your family dying, your kids might even. You know, especially if they ain't in your household and your, your baby mom was wicked and took them away from you. You gotta understand that everything is the Lord's will. See, you, you know when you really have faith is when you're not scared of death and when you lose something in this world, the book of Job, which is one of my favorite books, explain, you lose on this side, but then the Lord's gonna give you sevenfold, man. He had more children, beautiful children. Hello? Huh?
But yeah, you know, my bad, y'all. But yeah. Damn it, how the hell did I forget that? But anyway, so going back to you have to lose to gain in this world. And then 1 Corinthians 7 and 31 says, use the world not as a building. So you are in this world. Ain't nobody saying that you gotta be a person who don't do anything, but you don't put your hope in it. You don't put your all into it. You're supposed to separate. You ain't supposed to indulge in everything that you see. Our people don't get that. Because, like 2 Edward 6 said, Edward was like, you made the world for our sakes. Why do we not possess it? See, our people got to understand that we are in punishment. And that the kingdom that was promised to us is eternal. I don't want to have a kingdom where I'm going to die. You know what I'm saying? I want a kingdom where I'm going to have pleasures on every side. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. pleasures evermore. I gotta find it. Let me see if I can find it real quick. show me the path of life and that's what we're doing right now we are on we are in the path of life see what we're doing is going to end in life everything else ends in death proverbs 8 and 36 says that he that hate me love death so when you're doing something outside of this this ain't your primary conversation guess what you're are slated for death this is slated for life. So it says Psalms 9, 9, I mean 16 and 11. Thou will show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand, that there are pleasures forevermore. So that's what the kingdom is all about, man. So while everybody wants this this shit, you got so now you got Bill Gates, he bought up all the farmland, right? Now we already eat GMOs. They got like this little farm and greenhouse where they're literally making like food out of technology. I mean, I guess it, I guess it's the same as GMOs, but they really do it. Like now, you got um, the baby uh, formula shortage, famine, basically. Now you got Bill Gates talking about he's making the synthetic. Everything is synthetic. So you want this world, everything is heading to be, everything is fake for the most part. Even these, even these women is fake. Fake ass, fake hair, fake eyelash, eyelashes, fake titties, all that. So everything is fake. Everything is artificial. That's what he saw. He's artificial. All he deals with is artificial intelligence. So guess what? If you want this, that's what you're going to get. So when oh, and then they're making lab meat. Like they're making they make her meat. They're making meat by a 3D printer, man. So your body. I'm telling you, man, that's why, I, like, let me read this real quick, man. Matthew 24 and 21. And it says, for this shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So, do you understand what I just read? The Lord is telling you, now, if you know history, there was some very bad times in history. 
very bad time. I mean, the Lord flooded the earth. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You had people eating their children. You had famines. You had war. You had all that. The Lord said that this time it's going to be worse than that. It's going to be worse than that. So, I can't even imagine that. I just want to not be a part of it. I'm going to be in it, but I hope not to be a part of it. Because I want to be on the good side of the Lord, man. All these people, they don't care. So a lot of people are going to find out the hard way. So, but he said for the elect's sake, he's going to shorten the days. He's going to shorten the days for us. But you have to ask yourself, why he have to shorten the days? Why you think these days is zooming by so fast? Like I said, like it seems like I'd be out here like every three days now. It's zooming fast because he's speeding up. The prophecies are speeding up and it's beautiful. A lot of people don't understand what's going on. A lot of people are gonna be eating their children and then guess what? A lot of these babies are gonna be starving because like I said, it's a baby formula shortage. And guess what? They always got that. They, so they caused the problem, create a boogeyman, then they have you react and then they give you a solution that they already have planned. That's how the government works. And then you gotta understand, so now, right there, 387, DSW. Thank you very much. Yep, yep. So, you gotta understand that, so everything that you, so we're, we're um, leading into a world of being controlled by technology. You're already controlled by technology. That's why you can't go nowhere without your phone. You can't go nowhere without your credit card. You got uh, all these type of, you got smart TVs, laptops, everything. Everything is so-called smart, right? We're heading into now it's time to fuse man with the technology and have your data on a damn database. All right, having your soul, your spirit in a damn database. And then when you try to tell people that, they're like, oh, you crazy. Do you understand who you're dealing with? Let's get songs real quick. Psalm 64, 6. They search out iniquities. This is what they do. Guess what? They got the world in their hand. They don't got to work. So what they're doing, instead of enjoying the earth, enjoying the world, they searching out iniquities. They're trying to find out how to destroy these people right here. And guess what? Everybody else is going to be a casualty. Because it ain't just Jacob's trouble, it's the world's trouble. Because there's going to be a lot of casualties in Jacob's trouble. Everything is to destroy these people because he know he have but a short time. So, since they got the world, they got all the freedom in the world, they get all their scientists together and find out formulas, literally, and find out things that can mess up your body, find out, th find out things that can go into your body and deteriorate it over time instead of just killing you call a slow kill. Alright? So, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Remember, Ezekiel 28.3 said that it's nothing that he can hide from him because he searched out everything. Because he got the freedom, he got the liberty to do so. If the earth is given to you and you take your time to search out everything, he don't know everything, but he know everything when it comes to wickedness. He don't know righteousness at all. That's why he don't know everything. But when it comes to wickedness, he searched it out. He he accomplished a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. So when we're trying to tell you what this man is doing, people be like, no, no, that's crazy. Why would they do that? They got the world. That's the problem. We're dealing with a different type of species right here, okay? We're dealing with the wicked. See, he's estranged from the womb, so the Lord created him to be the wicked. He created him to be the wicked. So, that's who you're dealing with. Let's go to have a cook. Have a cook two and five. Yeah, also because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man, neither keep him at home, who enlarges his desire as hell. So everywhere that he go, hell follows. And it said, in is as death. So death is hell and follow him. And he is as death. That's why when you go to Revelation 6 and 4, it said that he was he took peace from the earth. Alright, Matthew, let me get that real quick and come back. 
So Revelation 6 and 4, it said, and there went out another horse that was red. What color did Esau come out? Red. And power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Right, and that great sword is the nuclear missile. And guess what? God that made God with his rush of the day and with other nations is going to shoot that great sword on this place. And he only going to deliver his elect from the, child, from the children of Israel, man. So it says, so yeah, also because he transgressed about wine, talking about his philosophy. Now, see, Christianity did his job. He's done with that. He said, you know what? That did that. Now it's all about technology and science. That's what everything about now. So basically, your God now, and Elon Musk, he admitted, he said that, that, um, that AI is summoning a demon. So that's going into sorcery, that's going into witchcraft. That's what they do. So that's the God now. He said, forget about sweet Jesus. He did his job, it didn't work. It worked to the point of these people though. Even Esau, Edom know that Jesus, you know, he's a little play toy. But these people really took on to it, especially our women. All right, Jesus got a stronghold on our people. He still got a little stronghold on the world, but now he's saying, forget Jesus, it's all about technology and science now. That's his new one. And it says, he needs to keep at home. That's why he got US embassies. And basically like, I think like every nation except for like 12. Yeah. I think he got um, US embassies in 184 countries at 196. Like that's ridiculous. So he never keep at home. And as, his, he enlarged his desire as hell, and as death cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all people, and people unto him all people. So he do that with his democracy, he do that with his philosophies. He Back in the 50s and 60s, he used to tell other nations to come over here, this streets is paved with gold, and that you can write your dreams on a golden brick. Like they really used to do that. Then. They over there in other countries tell him, you got to follow us. And if you don't follow us, then he think the nations were the women for the most part. He come over there and give women liberty. And that's why the world is in chaos right now. Because over there in the East, women is more subjection. But not as much anymore because he went over there. And now all the nations have drunk of the, of, of the wine of her fornication. So, all the, so now you got McDonald's in China. You got McDonald's probably in Afghanistan. Like you, so everywhere, everything that goes on in America, the other nations took hold by force, <laughs> by force. All right, that's why he keep over to them all people. And guess what that electronic imprint gonna do? Gather him to gather unto him all people and keep over to them all nations. That's what that's gonna do. So it said uh, Habakkuk 2 and 6. So now all these take up a parable against them and a tiny proverb against him and say woe unto him that increase of that which is not his how long and to him that laid of himself with thick clay hold on real quick I really don't I really don't want my wife to interrupt
But um, yeah, so just call me. But yeah, so demons is out. You got people yelling, you got people protesting, you got how you I see how you high S U P K man. They be starting riots down there because they be trying to make um so-called white people kiss their feet and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, just preach the word, man. So that's why the scripture talks about how people preach Yahweh Shah for envy and strife. So they do everything with contention. So going back. Revelation 2 and 2 and 3. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. So the Lord is not forgetful to forget your labor of love. So don't ever think that you're coming out here for no reason. That's why you got people out here who don't come out in the winter time. Who do come out, do who do come out of hibernation to come out when it's a nice day. Because they don't really have faith. And they're not men of the Lord. That's why Yahweh Shah said through Paul, a little leaven leaven the whole lump. So you have to have this truth 100%. You cannot teach that the electronic imprint is anything else other than the RFID. You cannot, you cannot do that. You cannot teach. Matter of fact, you cannot not teach about Babylon the Great being destroyed. You cannot teach that the Lord is only dealing with the remnant. But that's what some of these groups do. Some of these groups just debate, you know? So see, I know thou works in thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. That's what I'm talking about. These other camps, these other hireling camps, they're not warning the people. So our people is going to be destroyed, and that's why the scripture said, woe unto the pastor that scattered the sheep. Because a lot of people, you know, listen to ISUPK, listen to IUIC. IUIC, just that title alone is a hell no. Our Christ had a stronghold on our people for centuries. We finally get the real name through the Rakaqua Doctrine, the Holy Spirit, and then the man who taught the name on video for almost two hours changed the name to Christ. And most high Christ blessed, man. If you don't, man, hmm, I'm going to keep my words to myself, man. But anyway, it's saying, Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. That's why the scripture said, Mark them who are contrary to the doctrine. So you got a lot of people who's mad at Great Millstone because they always reproving and rebuking those who are contrary to the doctrine. Doctrine is very important. If, if I got a favorite song and I went to a concert and I know, the, I know my favorite song. I know how it sound, how the beat sound, I know what the lyrics sound like. But then I go to the concert, a key is off, a note is off. I'm like, wait a minute, what the hell is going on? And so the, the, the doctrine, which is the new song, that's very important. And you got people who's playing with it. So, uh, Revelation 2 and 3. And has poor and has patience for my name's sake, because we have the name, and has labor and has not fainted. So, Lord willing, we endure to the end, continue to do what we do. I really feel like this is going to be the last year of us preaching. Because they've been talking about disinformation. So, they putting everybody in the disinformation box. You know, all these Edomites that's whistleblowing, where we get our information from. Because they, they fulfill the prophecy, make their tongue fall upon themselves. So, you got to understand that we, matter of fact, what did it say again? Oh yeah, so we haven't fainted. And I really feel like this is gonna be the last year of us preaching. Cause I really feel like the famine of the word is coming. And guess what? When you read, when you read Amos 8 and 11, the famine of the word is gonna come before before the actual famine of bread. And we are in an orchestrated famine right now. So that means that the word is about to be done away with. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. When he take the men of the Lord off the streets, it's no talking after that. So it says, Amos 8 and 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, El Shai, that I would not send a famine in the land, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but the hearing of the words of the Lord. 
So that's coming before the actual famine. And I can say, when I go into the store, it's not stocked like it used to be. And then you got all these alternative news stations talking about it. But, you know, the West prop propaganda ain't talking about it, though. But you got all these people talking about it. Because, guess what? They're not compromised. They're not controlled. So, the problem is, oh, oh, the problem is this, though. So when I watch, come on, man. So when I watch these alternative news stations, right, they speaking the truth. But the problem with them, and they be Edomites for the most part. I believe they be Edomites for the most part. They could be Jake. They could be Edomites looking Jake. But I'm going to say the Edomites for the most part. They always talking about, yeah, you better be happy that we're giving you this information for you to be ahead of the curve. So what if you head of the curve? You're going to need a spiritual power in that day. That's how you know that it's really Esau too because he really think about warning up, getting guns that is going to protect him in that day. Guns run out of bullets and food run out too. So you're going to need a spiritual intervention. You're going to need a galactic military which only these people possess in that day. It's the man, the Lord said he ain't coming down with great wrath. And who wrath is it? It's Yahweh Basham and Yahweh wrath because the wicked is his sword. So. So you got all these people, yeah, you might know about the family, you might know about this and that, you might know about the things that's coming, but where do your hope lie? That's the problem. Where do your hope lie? All right, uh, Amos 8 and 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahweh, and it shall not find it. So why why are you going to inquire of the word of the Lord after they sanction the word? Because you're gonna be like, oh shoot, I don't know what to do. Matter of fact, Luke 21 and 25. And there should be signs in the sun and in the moon, and you see that all over the world. China's whole sky was red, the moon was red. So, it, like, don't just look at those things and be like, oh, they ain't nothing. They in the scriptures, man. These things are coming to pass, whether you like it or not. You got all kinds of signs in the world. They talking about a, um, a solar eclipse gonna be tomorrow, and then it's gonna be another one in November, I think. So all these signs, yeah, there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations. It's going to be a very bad time. So in that time, all the people that walked up and down the street and then inquire, you know, and I love the way that the Lord got it too. Because when they look at it, they look at us as a so-called black man, Latino man, Native American man, and they be like, ah, oh, he don't got nothing to say. Then they, and then, because the scripture said that not many noble, not many mighty are called. So he picked the lowly to confound the wise. So we are in a lowly state. We don't got no status in life. So who gonna listen to us? But and I love that's the way that the Lord have it. Cause like even these women that walk up and down the street, right? They look at us like, ah, scruffy beard. He ain't, he ain't uh, manicured up. You know, he ain't groomed up. These gonna be the men that you're gonna be looking for in that day. So that's why, who cares, man, what people think? Come out here and do the work of the Lord because that's your salvation. Confess righteousness with the heart and confess salvation. Confess about the salvation, man. I'm paraphrasing, messed up the scripture. But yeah, so, and it says, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. When you go into that word perplexity, it means to be without resources, not knowing which way to turn. So that's why people gonna be inquiring on the men of the Lord in that time. Cause they ain't gonna know where to turn, but then they gonna be like, wait a minute. I do remember it was a man out there with a dress on, that's what they would call it, talking about these things that was gonna come to pass, but it's too late. It's too late after that. So you got all these things, right? The inflation, people worrying about their future. Just did a video on that two days ago. And ain't gonna be no future. This future is going out with fire. But you got people who don't know that. They don't even wanna know it. They wanna believe what they wanna believe. But you got people worrying about their bills. The, 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 um, the housing industry is done. 
people worry about their rent, rent going up. So you got inflation going up, rent going up, mortgage, all that. So you got people who like, how will people bills? Yeah. And then when you read, when I read that article, it said low income, it said low income Americans, which consists of you Israelites, and it said two thirds. How spiritual is that? So, yeah, a lot of people are gonna be sadly mistaken. A lot of people are gonna be eating each other. So, Luke 21 and 26, man's heart's failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So all this calamity, all these plagues, all these things is coming to pass, man. Right in your eyes. Look at that, you got Jake riding a skateboard and stuff. No care in the world. Like I said, these people are just done. They're, 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 they're through their missile food. They're going to be fueled for the fire. If you don't repent, you're going to be destroyed. You better inquire and see who you are. You better inquire and see if you're an Israelite. No! And you better find out what's really going on. Because time is short. Time is shorter than it have ever been. Very cliche saying to say, but every day you wake up, you are literally closer to doomsday, the great day of the Lord. So, so all those people who think that the Lord is coming back, passing out that Danny lines and lollipops, thinking that he's about to come back and be mad, he said that he sent a sword on the earth. Do you understand sword? Consists of trouble. Sword consists of pain. Hey, swords consist of chopping tooth. All right, there's gonna be a lot of that. You probably is gonna have a crazy man out here with a machete, chopping legs off, and because guess what? It's gonna be no food out here. So the Lord said that His servants gonna eat. I'm gonna trust in that. I ain't gonna allow my flesh to uh, overtake my mind. I believe. Can't nobody tell me no different. All right, so Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So the day of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai is darkness and not light. And what consists of that darkness? People starving, people killing each other, uh, the electronic imprint, uh, World War III, uh, nations against nation. All right, then you're going to have the missiles. And guess what? People think that they just gonna die, like, okay, a missile gonna come, destroy this place, people gonna burn for a couple seconds and then die. No, the Lord gonna keep, he said that the, the screams of their torment ascended up. All right, the screams of their torment ascended up. So that means that the Lord is gonna keep your spirit inside you. All right, that's what's coming to the earth, man. But when you hear that, that don't put fear in people's heart. They think, like I said, they think everything's a game. They think everything's a fairy tale gonna find out the hard way. So it says, as if a man did flee from a lion in a bear meadow and went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and the serpent bit him. So you're not gonna be able to escape. So the scripture talks about if you escape the famine, the sword gonna get you. If you escape the sword, captivity gonna get you. And if you escape captivity, the beast of the world gonna get you. So you gotta realize, that's why you got zoos in these major cities, because guess what? Those animals gonna be loose. All this in the scriptures, man. And the beautiful thing about it is that people think, just, all right, if you had a heart surgeon, all right, I always use this analogy. A person that's a heart surgeon, you don't know nothing about hearts. You don't know nothing about hearts at all, but you're gonna argue with a person who's been doing this their whole life for damn near. A person that's a heart surgeon for 40 years, he been doing so many surgeries, he, served, he saved so many lives, then you got a person to come into the damn, um, hospital talk about you doing it wrong you don't even know the scriptures you don't know what the hell is going on why are you even talking inquire first that's why the scripture says this because i'm tired of people talking man that's why i don't even give them the time to talk the scripture says that when you perceive that there's no knowledge in their lips get away from them because all you're going to do all we're going to do is argue and it might turn into fisticuffs and i'm telling you you don't want to see these fisticuffs because I, I, you don't know what type of anger I had. I hate this place. And I don't like wickedness, man. And I hate y'all niggas, man. I hate them. I hate, I hate Esau, eat them. And then guess what? I hate these niggas. 
you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans who don't want to get right with the Lord, the Lord gonna kill you. And guess what? It's a so-called looking white man over here, right? But he could be a Jake. So this ain't a skin color thing. A lot of people think that when you see this sign, if you look white, you can't come up and inquire. You can. Because if I have a baby by a white woman, nope, right there. Right there. Excuse me. Right there. So, yeah. So you gotta understand. If I have a baby by a white woman, then my son has a baby by a white woman, and his son has a baby by a white woman, it's gonna look like him with the New Orleans shirt on. So that's what you gotta understand. But he came from me. So like, cause you got people like I had, I had a um, so-called black woman call me yesterday and said like, oh, why you hate Africans? They look just like us. First of all, most people back in the ancient time, everybody had melanin. Cause everybody come from the earth. All right, that's a skin disease. When you see pale people walking on the earth. All right, that's what you gotta understand. That's called leprosy. And if you totally uh, cover, it's called clean leprosy. So, Anyways, but you got people who want to come up and try to debate you about the scriptures and don't even know nothing but John 316. It's 84 books in the Bible, and the regular Bible got um 66. So that means that you're missing a whole Greek captivity. So you got people reading uh, KGB. Yep. So you gotta understand that. You got people who don't even know about the other 12. The whole Greek captivity is not in the um, King James or the New King James or the NIV. It's in the King James 1611. The Bible Destruction Group took those books out. Do you want to know why? Because it named names. It tell you who the wicked is. Alexander the Great, Antiochus Epiphany, all of them is in the scriptures, but they took those out. Then they was able to manipulate the scriptures, make everybody believe it's a fairy tale. So now I'm going into prophecy, and one thing that people can't say, but they'll try, they'll say, oh, whatever you say, it ain't true. You can't say that a famine ain't being orchestrated right now. The scriptures talks about a famine that's coming. You can't say that these nations ain't, you got Russia and Ukraine, you got China, everybody's against NATO and the EU right now. China's against the NATO and the EU, Russia against the NATO and the EU, Turkey against NATO and the EU, Saudi Arabia against the NATO and the EU, Iran against the NATO and the EU, all this in the scriptures. But when you go to Christianity, they don't go into Jeremiah. They don't go into Isaiah. They don't go into Ezekiel. They don't go into Revelation. They go into John, the book of John. All they want to read is John 3.16, God love everybody, when that's not the scripture. And, and I'm tired of everybody trying to put the Lord in the box. I can have a favorite shirt. I can have a favorite pair of pants. I can have a, a, a woman, if I had a couple of women, I can, I can like one better, but God can't like nobody better. God gotta like everybody better. I can hate, I can love, God only can be one way. The person that created you and gave you all your functions, you gonna tell him how he can be. So that's what I'm saying. A lot of people are gonna be sad and a lot of people will have a rude awakening. So Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and seven, it said, blame not before thou hast examined the truth, understand first, then rebuke. People don't do that. They already come up thinking that they know everything. This ain't the time to be debating. This is the time to get your life right. All right, you had your chance of fucking holes and doing, you know, doing all that stuff. Now it's time for you to repent. And that's the best deal ever. The Lord said you can be saved from all sins if you repent and truth is sincere. That means when you repent, you don't do it again. So that's the best deal ever. We are at the end. Isaiah 55 and 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. But since you got the devil that run the world, he tell you don't trust in God, trust in science, trust in technology. All right? Because this is the most, this is the worst as it has ever been. This is a godless society. You've been indoctrinated since you came out the womb. You come out the womb, you get 13 shots in you. So you already effed up when you come out the womb. So guess what? Ain't nothing pure no more. But the scripture said that all things to the pure is pure. But all things is not pure to the under to the defiled and unbelieving. So everything that you, so you got people, the scripture said that the elect, the elect of King. Oh shoot. Hello? I can't hear you. Where? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna start.
But yeah. So, so going back to Sirach 11 and um, 7. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. Understand first, then rebuke. Then it said, answer not before thou hast heard the cause. Neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. And that's what people do. And that's the woman trait. Women love to interrupt you in the midst of your talk. But most men was raised by their mama, so they take on them traits. You Men don't have a backbone in this world. Women got more backbone than men in this world. Everything is turned upside down, all right? So you got fools, so you got this wicked, you got this evil scientist who actually, hold on, glad you ain't coming here. Yeah. So, you gotta understand, so you got all these things, so they actually have things in a food that turns men's hormones into a feminism. That's what I call it, feminism. Then you got things that women eat and turn them into masculinity. So everything is upside down. That's why when um that rapper, that um that that that, that alphabet rapper, um young MA, she came out harder than most of you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Came out harder than most of y'all men. That's what I'm saying. Everything is upside down. But no damn well, if she try to square up with a man, she gonna get knocked the hell out. But that's the problem, so this man have turned everything upside down. Now we're about to come back to the rightful order. That's why Isaiah 4 and 1 gonna take place. So all these women that's walking up and down here with these skimpy clothes on, the scriptures talks about when a lawless society comes, a lot of women gonna be getting raped. And it's just what it is. You think people care about your feelings in that day? It's a lawless society. All the women that turned all the men down and left them on red, they gonna get you, all right? They gonna get you. That's what you gotta understand. All the men that you gave stiff arms to, all the men that you left on red, all the men that you think that you were so good, oh yeah, they gonna be free in that day. So that's, that's, that's what we're coming into, man. So a lot of people gonna starve. It's already orchestrated. Like I said, you got the, um, you got the, um, like I said, you got planes just dropping out the sky, hitting food, food processing plants. Come on, how dumb can you be? And it's been happening for the past two months. Like 22 major food processing plants been hit by planes. Ask yourself that. But guess what, they ain't put that on the news though. So that's what you gotta understand that a lot of people don't understand what's going on. So you better seek you the Lord while he may be found. Cause the Lord is, well, he gave the spirit to certain men. Certain men come out here and declare the truth. And don't care about how people view them. Don't care about putting their life on the line. Nobody cares, all right? Cause you gotta understand when you do this, you make yourself a prey. That's what the scripture says. When a man stand up for righteousness, he make himself a prey, all right? So. You gotta understand that we are coming in to a time where your works that you have done, the Lord will reward you, man. And we all, and we all got the penny. We all fight for the penny. The ones, and guess what? It don't matter if you came in last year, three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, we all fight for that penny. The Lord put the spirit on you to wake you up. You gotta remember that too. He gave you the truth. He ain't give your family and friends the truth. He gave you the truth to tell them if they reject it, they're going to be destroyed. Now the Lord may have mercy, you know, because the scripture said that the unbeliever wife can be sanctified by the believer husband. That including the kids too. But you never know. You could have a demon of a wife. You know, you don't know what your woman do. When you give your time to the Lord, you just got to trust in the Lord that she ain't doing what, she, what you might think she might be doing. But you don't know, man. You don't know. Because the scripture talks about that Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Jeremiah 3 and 14. It says, Turn off backsliding children, say if Yahweh, Baal Yahweh Shad, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. So, one of a city, two of a family. If you got five people in your family, matter of fact, when you go to um Matthews 10. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go to Luke. I like I like that one better. So Luke 12 
and 51. Suppose ye that I have, that I come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. And guess what? The division started back in 2020 with the pandemic. With the, with the, um, with the snake oil. It started with that. You have families really separated. Oh, uh, you ain't get it? You can't come by me. So you got people separated. So it started with that. Then it said from, for from henceforth, there should be five in one house divided, three against two, two against three. That sounds like one of a city, two saved, all right, one of a city and two from a family. It might just be your husband, it might just be you and your wife. Could just be you and your kids. You don't know. So realize that this truth is for you, it's not for everybody. So it said the father should be divided against the son and the son against the father. And that's all going to happen when the famine comes, when they start putting the men of the Lord on the news, they're going to try to deliver us up. And some of us some, um, some of us going to be our martyrs, all right? Some of us is going to be delivered up by, by the family. You, you think your wife is with you, we're going to see in that time. So when all hell break loose and they start demonizing us and saying that we are dangerous and you shouldn't be around them and we're terrorists and all that other stuff. That's when we're going to see who is real and who is not. Even the men of the Lord. You're going to be scared. You better pray that you don't be. So I said the father should be divided against the son and the son against the father. The mother against the daughter. And the daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law. And the, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So the Lord, that's what he's doing. He's separating the sheep from the goats. As I say in Matthew 25. All right, the sheep is the elect, the goats is the heathen, and the top heathen is Esau Edom. But Esau Edom, two thirds of these people and the rest of the nations, y'all in the same boat. The only, the only mercy, you know, the mercy that two thirds is going to get is that after y'all be burnt, y'all will be able to be born into the kingdom on the good side. All the other nations are going to be servants. So that's what we're coming into, man. So nobody, so you, you're supposed to lose to gain. So like even in the um, in the sports world, the way that you lose in the sports world, if you want to be the best basketball player, you in the gym, you working out, you not partying, you're not drinking, you wearing, you taking care of your diet, you doing all those things. That's the same as losing. Because guess what? You're saying, fuck the word, I want to be great. How much more in the truth? So you ain't supposed to be doing everything. You ain't supposed to be at every damn basketball game, every damn concert. Drinking every day, smoking, doing all, doing what the world do. You're supposed to lose on this side to gain life eternal, which this world cannot give you. But you got Esau Edom talking about some damn technology which can malfunction. Talk about you can live 300, 400 years. You're going to be just like a computer. You're going to have to get updates every six months. Watch for the people who take it. But to be honest, he ain't even going to be able to um, fully be able to enjoy it. The Job said this. <laughs> Job 20. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. Because so at that time, the scriptures talks about how the people is going to stand in action against their uh, kings and princes. They're not going to regard you anymore. So they're not going to be looking to you for guidance. At that time, everybody going to want your neck, Esau. Everybody. You're going to be small among the heathen, as the scripture says. So it says, in the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When you go into the word uh, sufficiency, it talks about clapping hands. Like, yeah, I did it. I finally accomplished my great reset, AKA the new world order. The Lord said he gonna rain upon you, all right? So it said every hand of the wicked, that's talking about the people. And the word wicked is imal, which means laborers. So the hands of the people are gonna be against you. So you're gonna have more of a, see, it's gonna be more of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, it's going to be people going against your agenda than people going for it. So, restriction. I think that's the word. It's going to be more people restricting what you got for them than people just giving in. But a lot of people is going to give in, though, because most people are faithless. So, 
It said, when he is about to fill his belly, the Most High should cast the fury of wrath upon his head, and it should rain upon him while he is eating. So while he eating, all right, while he in his little council room, sitting at that big round table, talk, clapping, talking about, yes, we did it, probably in the, in the rocks, most likely in the rocks, all right, because he know that his time is short. But while he's clapping, that's when you're going to hear, that's when you're going to feel the earth rock to and fro like a drum. Because he's going to rain it upon his head. So it says, he shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through. Because a lot of people going to die. And, and guess what? The men of the Lord is going to grab up the ones that remain alive out of the caves of the rocks and put them in captivity. Matter of fact, let's read Psalms 149. Psalms 149 and 1. Praise ye, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Sing unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh a new song. And his praise in the congregation of the saints. This is the new song. As the scripture said in Jude 1 and 5, though you once knew this, I will put you in remembrance. So it's not that the song is new, if that has been refreshed. It wasn't like that. Like, remember, we came out of the Christianity age was that garbage so the truth first of all it was a uh, east it was the edomite name attached to christianity all right so then the truth came out through the apostles and elders and before them they had teachers dealing with abba Bibbins. all right he started it and guess what now the new song which is really refreshed now we now we're doing what we did in our past life see the thing is that the story was being written while we was prophesying back in our past lives. Now we have the total understanding of what's, what, is, what is written now. All right, so even um, John, which is um, Disciple John, he got the, um, the visions on the island of Patmos. He's here today. He's here today. He, he knows what Revelation talking about. He probably know it just as good as anybody too. So anyways, uh, cause he, he the one that got the vision. But it said, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. So this is what we're doing. This is a new song. This is the best song on earth. This is the only song that have a great message. That's what people don't get. So you got a lot of songs out here who got, who got a lot of great beats. They got a lot, a lot of beats, but what their their message suck. All right, our music is horrible. Our music is wicked. Our music you could just make you bob your head, but sometimes don't even do that because that's when spirits jump on you. Bob your head to some adultery, killing, stealing, and drug dealing, and all kind of wickedness, man. So it says, for Yahweh, take a pleasure in His people. He will beautify the meat with salvation. Let the saints be joyful. Let them sing. Sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praise of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands. So that's where we're going to beat you other nations. You other nations had no mercy upon us. All right? Well, I, I'll put it like this. Esau, Edom didn't have no mercy upon us. The other nations weren't as bad. That's why they're going to receive mercy at the end of the thousand years. Esau is going to be done at the end of the thousand years. All right? So it said, let the high praise of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. So the punishments upon the people, that's going to be two-thirds because the scripture talks about we're going to purge out the rebels. Every Israelite is not going to die because Israelites, Israelites is all scattered in the four corners of the earth. So guess what? Two thirds is going to die in this land. One third is going to be delivered. Then you got the rest of the, uh, you know, the elect is going to be over there in the other countries. And then you're going to have people who are not the elect. That's a lie. What's going to happen to them? They're going to be punished. They don't get right. They're going to get right in that day. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So that's you banking families, you high elite families, the so-called um, 
the Dukes. The Dukes. That's what they call um in um Genesis 36. It talks about the um the elite family of the Edomites. They call themselves the Dukes. So yeah, so all you bacon families, you secret society guys, y'all going into captivity, man. Henry Kissinger is still kicking. He's kicking for one reason, to get his old ass in the captivity, man. Old ass Rockefellers and Rothschilds, man. All the heart transplants that you had to stay alive. I think one of them died though. I can't remember which one off, off top. But um, yeah, y'all going into captivity. Y'all the first ones. So it said to execute upon them the judgment written, dishonor have all his things. Praise ye Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, man. That's what's coming to the earth. That's what's coming to the earth. So, Revelation 2 and 25, but that which you have all, but that which you have already hold fast till I come. And that's hard for most people. That's a stumbling block for most people. Some people think that having this truth ain't enough. Why? Because you still go through things. Things still don't go your way. You still being, you still being, you still being chastised. But guess what? In that day, as scripture said, they gonna vex a howl of spirit and we're gonna be singing for joy in that day. So everything that we're going through right now is just to build us up for the day that's coming. So guess what? In that day, a lot of people gonna find out the hard way. We've been trying to warn them. They ain't wanna listen. They ain't wanna listen. So it says, and he that overcometh, which means you have to endure unto the end, and keep up my works unto the end, tell him will I give power over the nations. This is my favorite scripture when it comes to a Christian talking about God love everybody. If the kingdom is for everybody, then why is the Israelites, which is the remnant, because they're going to be the ones delivered the first go around, why they're going to have power over the nations? All right? So it says that he shall rule them. Now, that don't sound, that don't sound good. Rule them with a rod of iron. That don't sound good at all. So where do all these nations fit in? In Christianity, you keep that shit over there, all right? It said, as the vessels of a potter, shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So the Lord is the ones that's putting the nations in our hands because the nation was always made for us. Remember, he said that he, matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Deuteronomy 32 and 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he sets the bounds of the people according to the number of children of Israel. So basically, he gave the heathens their portions first, and then he gave us the bigger portion. Because everything is centered around his children. So not, not saying that the Lord just gave them some piece of shit land, but he gave us majority. We got that whole fertile crescent. So that's what you call setting the bounds according to the children of Israel. So everything is for our sakes. Everything. Isaiah 14 and 1. For Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, and the stranger shall be joined with them and shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Now the strangers is talking about Israelites. Because you gotta understand, just like back in Paul's time, you had the circumcision and you had the Gentiles. The Gentiles was the people which we all became. To be honest, we all became strangers because we lost everything in this captivity. But we came back. We had powers, I mean, we had leaders before that. Like I said, you had Abba Bibbins, you had King Mashal, you had High Priest um, Ariel. 
high priest, uh, high priest Yaqua. You had those. You had them, I mean. Then you had the apostles, which, which are here today. So what I'm saying is that we cleave on to them. The Lord used them to give us the truth. So we are the strangers. And to say, and the people shall take them. Why was we strangers though? Because we lost our way. We was living after the manner of the heathen. That's how you become a Gentile if you were Israelite. It's real simple. Like the same way, because like the, the, the Gentile thing is so simple. And I always, I, I simplify it like this. The same way that a black man called himself an African American, celebrating Christmas, doing everything that Babylon the Great have to offer, that's why he was a Gentile. Then he woke up. Now he called himself by a Hebrew name. He identified himself by the tribe of Judah. It's real simple. That was happening back then. That's why they took the apocrypha out, which is really, like I said, the Lord controlled all this. He said, let their table become a snare. And by taking out the apocrypha, the table became a snare for a lot of Jake. So, because the whole Greek captivity is gone. Like, it was like King Antiochus uh, Epiphany, at that time, he made a decree that we wouldn't even allow to call ourselves an Israelite. So, and then that, and it ain't like that just happened 10 years and then, then the Roman captivity came. It was centuries and centuries, I think two centuries to be exact. And got to understand, that's generations and generations of being gentilized. I don't think that's a word. But basically, being gentrified in Greek culture, all right? So it says, And it shall come to pass in the day that Yahweh Bashmi Abashah shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. We are the ones that look to be, matter of fact, No, let me finish my thought first. We are the ones that are going through it. We are the 10. We are the first one fired and the last one hired. This whole system is built around our downfall. We have to buy. As the scripture says in the curses, Deuteronomy 28, 43, the stranger should get up high and you should get down low. We build this country, don't reap the benefits of it. Eve is winning more than a Jake man, but that's, that was orchestrated. He bind the strong man, got him out the house, and now he made the woman ahead, and now look at our nation. So we the one that need rest from our sorrows. Especially I think about the apostles who've been doing this for over 30 years, when the prophecies wasn't popping off like that. They need rest, all right? I haven't been in the truth that long. They've been in the truth longer than I've been alive, most of them, apostles to heart have. And guess what? I've been knowing about the truth for eight years. I feel like I've been in the truth my whole life, man. I need rest. I'm tired of this place. I'm vexed with the filthy conversation of the witch. That's why Ezekiel 94 said, mark them who sigh and cry. Mark them who sigh and cry. When you go into that word mark, it's a walk and it means mark of exemption. Exemption from judgment. So if you ain't signing and crying about you being a low state, about these people being at the bottom, about the devil being ahead and you being the tail, you're not a man of the Lord. If you happy with this place, you're not a man of the Lord. The Lord said this. And this is another stumbling block for a lot of people. Matthew 10 and 37. He that loveth his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. The scripture said that the servant is not greater than his master. We're going to go through things. We've been going through things. The Lord is building us up for the day to come, man. Oh, yeah. When you go to Luke, that's the one that I wanted. When you go to Luke 14 and 26, it said, He that even, if, if, if you don't hate your life, you cannot be my disciple. Because once you realize what this life has in store for you, and you're looking at the world for what it is, like you get a so-called bad beat, might be a man, but you get a so-called bad beat, she the worst of the crop. 
the best looking woman in this world is the worst. That's what I'm saying. Everything is upside down. So everything that you think that you want is, is the foul. Everything that you eat is the foul. The air that you breathe is the foul. The water that you drink is the foul. How you don't hate this place? If you don't hate this place, you're saying that the Lord don't have nothing better in store for you. That's what, it, that's what you're saying. In a nutshell, you're saying that I, I love this, I want this, I don't care what the Lord has in store. So a lot of people are gonna be left behind. He that findeth his life shall lose it. He that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Cause you got people who just ain't, you know, social. So they like, they hibernate in their houses, things like that. But they still eat whatever they want and they still do whatever they want. So guess what? It said, lose your life for my sake. So when you do that, you separate yourself, which means to make yourself holy. And you're going to do it to the best of your ability. Now going back to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How have the oppressors seized the golden city seized? We are in that process right now. Babylon the Great, aka America, ain't what it used to be. Ever since 2020 happened, it's been circling the drain. All right? It's really circling the drain right now. The petrodollar is not what it used to be. All right? It's not what it used to be. So guess what? The ruble is the number one performing currency in the world. The sanctions backfire. That's just the Lord doing his chest work. All right? The Lord, he, he do chess, baby. So, through the BRICS nations, like I, like I said earlier, they dealing among each other. That's three billion people, man. This place only 300 million plus, like 330. That's three billion. Most of the people is over in Europe and Asia, man. Eurasia, as they call it. So most of the people are on the other side of the world. They don't need America like that. So, the, so, so, that the tiny proverb is that you're not big and bad no more. When you go to Joel 3, it said that the, let the weak say I am strong. They all got the equalizer now. You know, they all got nuclear missiles now. All they gotta do is press the button. And guess what? They're going to press the button. So it says the Golden City cease, man. This shit ain't what it used to be. Like, just from December. Matter of fact, January 2020. February 2020. Soon as March 2020 happened, the pandemic happened, circling the drain. Dang, I should have had some water. <laughs> so I said that Yahweh Bashem El Bashar have broken the staff of the wicked. That's his power. And his power deals with the dollar. And the scepter of the rulers. So your kingdom's on the downfall, your dollar declining. That's why inflation going up. You need more dollars to get what you need. All right, so now they what they're trying to do, and everybody knows that that's in the truth, they're just trying to crash the economy so they can bring in a new one. And it's gonna be digital. And if you, and if you take it, you're gonna die. And there's no mercy. You can't repent from that. So, and it say, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest. So look what the Lord is saying. He, the whole earth is at rest when you go down. <clears throat> the scripture said, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. All right? So guess what? When the wicked bear rule the people more, that's why you see it all this morning. Like, come on, man. Baby formula shortage, this devil gotta go. So you got people with young children, and guess what? That's just that's just um, a punishment from the Lord anyway. Sometimes I'll be looking at little children, I'll be like, dang, you either here to be the liver or star. I'm talking about you for those who still have little babies, man. Babies are still being born. On top of the baby formula um, um, shortages, you should be breastfeeding anyway. That's what's wrong with these kids. But nah, they, my, my titties hurt, they suck too hard. So guess what? That's why these kids be retarded. And then you let them put 13 shots in them so they come out. So hey man, we gotta get out of here. 
we are in the worst case scenario. A lot of things is happening. Like I said, inflation going up, housing going up. Oh, shoot. You got it. <laughs> How you doing? I saw something at the door. How you doing, brother? I'm all right. I've mean, seen something at the corner of my eyes. Like, man. Like, yeah. this five minutes, dog. Five minutes of knowledge. But how you doing, though? Um, no, no, no fight. Yes, no fights, right? No. That's good. There ain't no time to fight. First of all, people don't fight no more. People shoot. People don't like these asses. That's why I don't fight. They ain't about to come back to try to get retaliated on me. But you see, it's a nice day. A lot of people out here, and I love it because this backs up the scriptures. Oh. But you got to understand, so the whole earth is at rest. You got to understand that when this devil go down, everybody going to be able to live right. So you're going to have these people who are going to have the law, sets, commandments written in the inward parts. They're going to just be able to beat. See, in this in this life, you have to worry about, damn, am I going off if I do this? Am I doing that? Damn, you got to look at the damn ingredients to see if you're taking pork and stuff. Like, you got to do so much. And then with this flesh, which Yellow is the... Yellow five is pork. Shit, yeah. Yellow five. All that. Like I said, it's, it's so much. I so much. Pork. I haven't ate pork in like 10 years, 12 years. But that's good. I don't eat beef or pork. I mean, you eat beef, but ah, it's good. Ah, oh, no, it's a whole animal. No, uh, you eat beef. But it's hooked. Yeah, but it's true of the cud if you don't get it. Ah. Uh, so, but what I'm trying to say is that you got to understand, man. So, going back to being in this flesh. So, all right, so you got all these women out here walking in skimpy clothes, showing off their shape. They're supposed to be covered. You know what I'm saying? Because guess what? As a man, if you're really a man, you look it. And if, you, and if you're really, really a man, you want it. And guess what? These women be having men. So now you're listening your heart after another man's woman. So like I said, this place got to go. And guess what? What this flesh is contrary to, to the spirit. And guess what? You cannot be perfect. You cannot be perfect. That's why we saved by grace and through the faith of your help shine. And we keep the law to the best of our ability. So I can't wait till I can just wake up and be, be one with the earth, be one with the stones. All right, be able to eat without having to worry. Be eat real food, not GMOs. Drink real water, not fluoride. All right, drink. Uh, I mean, and, and, and have women multiple, and don't have to yes. worry about a woman looking at another man or your or, or a man looking at your woman. That's the world that we enter into. But see, when you tell that to our people. It's so far-fetched, which it is, because it's the total opposite here. But guess what, man? We almost out of here. That Russia and Ukraine thing is really popping off. That's going to cause the World War III. But before the World War III, the electronic imprint got to come. And guess what, man? We almost out of here. So hopefully y'all, um, this was edifying. Inshallah, Wong. And the Howard Bosh, Shimmy Howard Shah, Barack and Thot. Inshallah, Wong to the Hopeful Elect. Above the ball. Kwame Asharala and Shalom.